Hey, howdy ho, Lions fans. Welcome to the Detroit Lions podcast, episode 356. This is the official Detroit Lions podcast for Reddit. I am your dashing host, Chris, and with me is my good friend and co-host, a superstar, Jeff the Riz Risden. How are you doing, my man? It is great to be with you, Chris. I'm, I'm ready to, to talk Lions and have some fun tonight. Oh, Let's do it. This is good stuff, man. This is huge. We got a couple things coming up here. First, we have a great interview with Lions superstar, all-time favorite, winner of the only playoff game in the Super Bowl era, Herman Moore, will be with us, and we're going to talk with him. And then also, we have a huge announcement to make, gigantic, and we're going to do it with the help of Herman. (gasps) What could it be? What could it be? Oh, what a tease, Chris. What a tease. <laughs> we got a lot going on. It's a great show. Riz, you ready to go, my man? Oh, let's do it. Let's kick this off and break it down. All right. We've got Herman Moore joining us today. What a great interview. Herman, thank you so much for joining us. You're one of my favorite wide receivers of all time. I grew up with you and... And, and the team, and, and Wayne Fonts, and Barry Sanders, and the only Super Bowl era playoff victory was the ball was in your hands many times that day that that's, that just sits in our hearts so so wonderfully. <laughs> no, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you, Jeff, for um, having me on. Really, really great. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, you're a, you're a legend for a lot of us and a lot of our listeners too. So it's it's a great pleasure to get you on here. Awesome. Let's uh, we started out. We went to the subreddit. We asked uh, for uh, an AMA. Asked me anything from some of the the users in the subreddit. We have some of their questions to pose to you and then a couple of our own that we're going to roll in as well. The first question is from somebody and some of these names are are a little wacky. So just bear with us. This one's from the lit fuse. (laughs) Uh, What's your favorite memory in Honolulu blue? And then also an add on. How does it feel to still have the high jump record at Virginia 34 years later? Your grandpa loved you when he was still here. Always seem like Herman and Barry are the reasons. Uh, you made him a Lions fair. Go Lions. We just found out that record was broken, though, in February. Sorry to say. Oh, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, you know, I'll start with the first one. Yeah. As far as my my favorite memory in Honolulu Blue and Silver was, uh, it's not even my personal uh, memory. It was watching Barry Sanders rush for 2,000 yards against New York Jets. And it was just a milestone for just such an iconic person for the the sports organization and what it's meant to our our fan base uh it's it, he's he's was a consummate leader he was someone who just showed up game in and game out he didn't always have the the, the greatest of games uh, in terms of yards uh but at the same time barry was one of the most consistent people uh that i've i've ever worked with and been proud to say i was a teammate of and uh so that that was probably it from just my own personal experience but even from a team standpoint, it would have to be 1991 uh, when we went to the NFC Conference Championship against the Washington Redskins at the time. And, you know, playing against them and being one game away from the Super Bowl. And, Chris, you, had, you mentioned that earlier that, you know, that's the ultimate part of our sp- – I'd known a whole lot about the Detroit Lions other than Thanksgiving Day playing uh, games – I didn't know what to expect other than I was a high draft pick. And uh, to go there and get that experience my my first year uh, was outstanding. Absolutely. And the high jump record, I mean, it's it, even if the high jump record right now was six feet <laughs> instead of seven plus feet, uh, I, I probably couldn't jump that now. <laughs> so somebody <laughs> had to break it at some point. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Though. I mean, 34 years, that, that's, a, that's a long time for a record like that to stick. So, uh, yeah. You, it uh, is. I don't know if I should be uh, – applauding and saying that's a great thing and a great feat or the fact they didn't get any recruits that could come in we couldn't find another high jumper in 34 years that is that is definitely the flip side of it yeah um so i got a question here for you from the the umbrella viking um let's hope he's not a vikings fan um who was your favorite qb to work with and why was it scott mitchell (laughs) <laughs> yeah uh, well they, they already knew it was going to be scott I, I would start the first one with it started out with uh eric kramer because we we had eric kramer we had chuck long andre Ware, rodney peak and finally they settled in on eric and i started to develop a little bit of rapport with him before he ended up leaving and going off ultimately to go over to chicago but uh, aside from that he helped me mature as a, a as a wide receiver but scott mitchell gave me the stability because as a starter scott knight had a lot of practice time 
Uh, we had a lot of preseason time, and then obviously we did some tremendous things during the game. And because of that, I was able to excel and get a report with him that every receiver wants, every quarterback wants. We look at the Lions today. Jared Goff right now it looks like it's T.J. Hawkinson, but uh, he's got to have that person he has a rapport with because that's where we both get our confidence. So Scott was definitely my guy. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. He was he was a lot of fun for the Lions. And I mean, look. Matthew Stafford doesn't show up. He's probably still got a whole ton of records for this team. He did a lot in his day. Uh, you guys all did. Um, let me ask you, you know, you've spent a lot of time with the, the, the team as your career has ended and become a bit of an ambassador for the team over time. And I kind of wonder, you and Barry and a lot of the other players take this role. Billy Sims, he's another one of my all-time favorite guys. He's, he was the reason that got me into the Lions, Billy Sims. I was... Oh. I'm a little older. Otherwise, it would have been you, Herman. But all, all, all you guys are ambassadors for the team. How's that camaraderie for folks who used to play for this team? I know there's been difficult times with the struggles with the, the, the record and some of the things that have happened over time. But, but you guys were great, and you remain attached to the team. And there's a certain pride that comes not just from being uh, you know, an, an excellent you know, top-of-your-game type of athlete, but also to remain loyal with a team that's had its trials and tribulations together how how do, how do you guys get along and 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 what's that like for 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 you guys as a group compared to say um the the dolphins who toast every year for for no one else going undefeated right <laughs> you know it, it's an interesting time when we get together the lions have um an orchestrated time of the year in, in which they get all the alums together and have a suite and you know you, you invite guys from out of town that will respond and then there are those that you mentioned, like myself and Barry Sanders, uh, Billy Sims, Lomas Brown, uh, even Eddie Murray, and guys like that that will continue to be ambassadors. Um, and it, it extends beyond just the organization. It's because of the, the brand itself and, and the, the communities and the fan base that it embodies. Um, the, the organization, the wins and losses that happen there are one thing, but these are people who have supported us all our career. So for us to be able to come back and contribute where we can't do on the field, where we can do in our communities. And for us, and I know me in particular, I, you know, I don't have the name uh, at the level that a Barry Sanders has uh, as it relates to the team and the accolades. But when it comes to the community uh, portion of it and being able to be an extension of that, I, I really take pride in that. And I, I think for me to contribute doing that since 1991 and then also moving my family, uh, not only moving my mom and sister here but now my my kids were born here my wife's from here and uh so it's 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 wonderful man i i love it that's awesome so um you're you're from virginia correct like danville virginia area yeah danville virginia you know they had me on my wikipedia page at one point i was from linwood new jersey <laughs> and my dancer was a my father was a dancer a backup dancer for someone uh which wasn't <laughs> true uh, and I was like, what kind of dancer was my father? But yeah, so so I'm, I'm happy to see you got Danville right. So yeah, Danville, yeah. Virginia. Yeah, I, I used to live out in Richmond. So I know I know the I know the state a little bit. But uh, um, as somebody who I didn't grow up in Detroit either, um, I've, I've moved to Michigan later in life. What was something that struck you about Detroit and, and being in Detroit that you weren't expecting when you first moved there? I think a lot of people always talk about the grit. They talk about, you know, this is a, a blue collar town, blue collar state. But what I saw was the diversity of people. And, and I love the fact that the sports, and it's been that way throughout. I started playing sports at six years old. To come here where you have all that passionate fan base, from the Lions to the Tigers, the Red Wings, uh, the Pistons, you know, it, you have true fans. And that bleeds over to tell you what kind of people are in the community as well because you start to get away from the differences that we have, whether it's socioeconomic or whether it's, it's cultural or anything like that. It's, it's just the togetherness that you find. I mean, it's not a perfect place and we, it has its, its places where things could be a lot better. Uh, but for the most part, that's what I saw in this fan base that you didn't see anything when I got here, but fans, you know, it wasn't about where they were from or who they were it just kind of blended and the culture around it is why I stayed, um, I love traveling throughout. A lot of people don't know, you know, I'd say this real quick, Jeff, you know, you mentioned Richmond, Virginia, you know, I didn't even know there was a Richmond, Michigan that's near where I live, but I started <laughs> learning all these, you know, all these different towns and Roscommon and, and, you know, I go up to uh, Gaylord and, and you start traveling different parts of the state. And um, I, I'm well, I've traveled here more than anywhere in my life uh, in terms of seeing it more so than I've even seen my birth state, uh, Virginia. 
that's that's great. And there's something about Detroit, and it says a lot. It's easy as an athlete. You come to a town. I don't want to say it's easy, but you you come to a town. You paid a pretty good sum of money, and and hey, I love the city. Thank you, Detroit. That kind of thing. But afterwards, it's the guy who stays and really and and moves his family into town. Then then you know. This, the city got under his skin, and and he really, really believed what he said. And it says a lot about you, Herman. I mean, I'm a guy. I, I, I grew, spent my life in Detroit. I moved to Southern California for work. I'm I'm in Champa Bay now for <laughs> for work as well. Um, and and I, I always continue to look to get back to Detroit. It's a special kind of place with a special kind of people, and and it's it's great that you saw that and you you decided to make it your home. It, it means a lot because fans really appreciate that. Fans and 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 other people appreciate when they see somebody coming from the outside to really get it, to really understand what's special about that city. So so good on you for doing that. I want to. I want to ask you about a guy who lives down the street from me. Um, you spent some time with uh, Coach Fonts. Um, <laughs> you spent a lot of time with him as a player. He was a guy. He was at the time. He was polarizing for some people. Um, loved him. He and in the end, people. I think it's one of those don't know what you got till it's gone kind of things. I think he had a tougher time than he really deserved while he was coaching this team. But you know, as a player, what did he mean to you? And and have you guys kept in touch afterward? Uh, after your 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 uh, your time with the team, and and then the last question: What's your favorite memory in playing for Coach Fonts? Well, uh, first and foremost, you you you're right on point. Uh, Coach Fonts was one of the the, the kindest, uh, most respectful coaches I've ever played with. Uh, his professionalism, I don't think, was ever given credit uh, in public because of the way he handled some of it and always being protective of the team. Uh, and never throwing anyone under the bus. And with with the way he carried himself and the way he had a way of communicating with us uh, made us feel like people and made us feel like men. Uh, we were players, but we were people first. And because of that, he got every ounce of what he could out of the players, and we respected him for that. And, you know, after our careers, everyone goes their own way. You know, Coach was going back to the nice warm weather in Florida and getting out of uh, the cold weather in Michigan. Uh, well-deserved, but, um, it, you know, so you lose sight and you lose touch, but every once in a while you have an opportunity to communicate and touch, but definitely uh, not as much as we all should, uh, but miss him and, and thought of him as a, just not just a great coach, but like I said, a great player. My, my biggest memory I would have to say is I, I can give you real two, two of them real quick. Sure, sure. One was uh, doing training camp. Uh, there's this time when you're, you're supposed to check in and, uh, be on time and make sure you're you're in the hotel before curfew and all those things. And some of us players, you know, you get there. My family's in town, and I'm trying to get my kids settled. I'm trying to help my wife, and I, I got in one time a little late. And I call myself. I'm I'm trying to creep into the back of the hotel, the exit door, and come up the stairwell, and I pass coach. <laughs> and the, the thing he said to me is. Uh, you didn't see me. I didn't see you. <laughs> so that's what, I, that's what I know. I had, I had, I had a good coach. And then the other one was uh, when he came to recruit me down at the university of Virginia, uh, most coaches will come in and they, they bring in their scouts. They have you run all these routes. They have you do the 40, they have you do all these things. We went over to Scott stadium uh, at the university of Virginia and coach Fonts and I, we literally walked around the field like two or three times. And all he did was talk to me. And he would he he would toss me the football like underhanded once in a while to catch it. And he says, you know what, we're picking the right player. So just so you know, if you're there at number 10 uh, on draft day, we're going to take you because I know you have all the tools. I don't need to come work you out. We've seen enough film. And just having that much confidence in me just meant I'm going to make sure I go out and give my team the best because this person is putting a lot of faith in me. The organization is putting a lot of money into me. And the fans are going to invest a lot of their time and energy into me. So that's that's what I always wanted to be as a player. And uh, and it, it worked out for the most part. It's it's one of the things we've talked about um, with the current regime, with Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes. Uh, you, you said you talked about how Wayne would not let players get called out individually, wouldn't call them out individually because it was a team effort. And it's something we know today. We talk about today as servant leadership. We talk about leadership as, as part of our show often. And Definitely. when this new regime came in, 
it, we saw it in the media. They were freaking out. Who's in charge? Who's in charge? Is Rod Wood in charge? Who's calling the football? They wanted to find something to yell at and be angry about. Like, the, like often happens, right? And and I immediately recognized what was happening. These are servant leaders that have taken over this organization, and they're running it differently. And as you mentioned that about Coach Fonts, I was like, you know what? That nails it. He was a servant leader before people knew what a servant leader was. Do you do you see that parallel with the current regime? In the front office and coaching staff I lines, I I do, and and it's that you bring that point up. It that is how you get players to respect you, uh, because you you're not placing yourself above them, and you're not uh, placing them below you, and saying that you do as I say, and 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 you place blame when things don't go well. You you exclude yourself. This is an organization that uses we, that uses us, that uses team. And when they say it, it's not just a throwaway. It, they mean it. And uh, when you have, I think, that number and that mixture of former professional players who understand what that means to the locker room is why they do it. They're, they're not doing it because it, they're trying to see if it works. They know it works. And uh, that's what I, I hear when I hear the press conferences. That's what I see. And one thing I will say is that the players, when I spoke to them about that candidness and about that that ability to have that kind of communication portal that doesn't exist sometimes with coach and player or organization, they said when the coaches have to get after them, that's why they don't get offended, they don't get bothered, they don't take attitude, they don't argue because they know where it's coming from. Yeah. And and I think it's wonderful. I think the the atmosphere there is very conducive to them helping to start to at least build something. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, let me let me ask a quick like tangent question to that. Um, I interviewed Barry last week and I asked him this, and then I got and I'm sure you'll probably answer it much the same way. There's a ton of former players on this coaching staff. They've been there. Um, more to the point, a lot of the players like know like oh, do say I used to play as him in Madden. You know, uh, they know who Antoine Randall L is. They they know who these guys are. Um, if, do you, how much importance do you place on it as a as a former player that it's you know former peers of yours and, and competitors of yours that are out there leading them um, instead of guys that you know maybe just don't have the recognizable background where they're like oh I, I didn't know I didn't know a coach played college football you know in 1968 you know how, how much of a difference do you think that makes for the team I think there has to be some relevance in that position especially from a leadership you would never go to a seminar or or take uh, uh, an executive course from someone who says, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of in business, but I don't know a lot about it, but I'm going to take your seminar and pay a lot of money. And I'm going <laughs> to believe everything that you say, and I'm going to trust my future with you. That's the same thing you get here. Because you have recognition, because you have someone who can go to a resume that wasn't too far gone, but at least you can say, you know what, I understand. And then when we have our banter, and when we have to go back and forth in conversation and dialogue, we can use some nonverbal communication. We can use some very tough communication and, and, and verbiage. But at the same time, we have a, a true professional understanding of what the end objective is, and that is to win uh, and be better. And when you can get instructions from someone who's done it or even done it better than you, it's nothing but respect when it comes with that. Absolutely. That's awesome. All right. And I appreciate the time. I want to talk about something, and I know you want to talk about this too. This is one of those we things. Um, it started with you, but it's it's a we. Tell us about Lions Fan Unite. Lions Fans Unite, this new app. Uh, there's a lot coming around. I want, I want you to tell us about it. Tell folks what's going on and, and what's the vision here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So with this, a couple years ago, I started looking at how could I create a, a way to give back to the Lions community? Um, what could I do that with? Is it you know, going out and setting up camps and and going out to their community and supporting their charities or all these things. But now we, we fast forward a few years and technology has advanced. And to build a community of, of like-minded people who are passionate about an organization or a brand, but it's tied so heavily now to wins and losses, I don't think it's fair to and does justice to a fan base that is loyal. And for me, I wanted to create one that they could come in and express themselves. There's nothing but giveaways and competitions and um, there's content that we'll create that you can only get on our platform uh, that is relevant to them. And then it becomes a community where we can constantly support each other in our initiatives and our endeavors. So creating Lions Nation Unite was important for me and having the ability to have uh, others who are very passionate about it and our content contributors get involved with that means that we continue to bring that communication, that uh, community together in in a very passionate way. Uh, one that is, it's, it's got some filters, but it's, it's truly not governed 
by uh, anything other than bringing your passion and being respectful of others. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, we're excited about the experiences that we're going to be presenting and giving away, but even more importantly, understanding what their causes are and what in their community matters to them that we can rally behind as a, as an organization, as a platform and as a community. So uh, Lions nation unite is going to be awesome. And uh, I'm, I'm, I can't wait till uh, people start to really join it and start to catch on with it. And uh, I'm going to be on it. And yeah, so it's, it's a fun thing and it's my give back to them and my appreciation for those that have supported me throughout my entire career. We've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now, and it's such a great, great thing you've thought up and put together here. I'm really excited to see how this goes. How do folks get access? How can, how can they take part and, 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 and view this as we go live? Yep. Well, they can go to our website and download the app at lionsnationunite.com. Uh, and they can also go and get it inside of the app stores. Uh, so we have it both for Apple and we have it for Android. Uh, so go in, download Lions Nation Unite, and you'll you'll see me in the description uh, talking about my, my reasons why I'm doing this. And uh, just support it. Just support not even just me. Uh, I would love to just say support me, but support us. Support our community. Uh, support what we're trying to build that we take ownership in and that gives us the ability to to be able to to have fun on our own platform yeah. and, and and support one another. Herman's put together a great group of content creators, including us, and who are on, on Lions Nation Unite. Check it out. Check out the website. Check out the app. Get it on there. It's on my phone already. Um, we may be pre putting some content up there as well. There's some really, really great stuff. Uh, this is a super, super cool opportunity to interact with your favorite creators and really get that taste of the lions. That's not uh, astroturfed or synthetic. This is the real, <laughs> the real flavor. This is the real deal. It's good stuff. Um, I want to talk about one of the things that really drew us in, Herman, was the the, the look toward uh, charitable giving and helping others in the community. And one of the things Herman's been able to, to to put together for us as we as we get together on this is we are going to have two tickets to the uh, Chicago Bears Thanksgiving Lions game to do as an auction. Oh, yeah. We're going to do it as an auction. We thought about giving it away, but it's our option to raise some money for Fisher House. We've been talking about this for a couple months. We're trying to build a Fisher House at the VA down in the city of Detroit. We've got one in Michigan and Ann Arbor. Detroit's where it's at. That's where we want to get this place built. We, You listen to our regular podcast, you'll see other uh, opportunities on how to give buying a shirt you can get a donation added for the shirt all that kind of stuff we're putting together but right now we're going to auction off two tickets to the thanksgiving bears game at ford field thanks to herman and lions nation unite thank you so much also an autographed mini helmet will be on the auction site it's the same one we use for saint jude we may be talking more about some stuff there as well as we go forward but herman i'm really excited about this venture i'm excited to see this kick off i want to thank you for joining us i want to thank you for starting lions nation unite and and doing this this is this is something I think that's long overdue, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a great mind that put this together. Thanks for thinking of us and let us take part in this and with you. Uh, thank you both for participating, and thank you for your support. And, uh, again, we can't do it without you. And uh, this, again, is my way of saying thank you to our community. And uh, let's go Lions. All right, man. So great to have Herman. So great to have him here and join us. Remember. Don't forget about us on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. Get access to the most intelligent Lions chat on the internet at our Slack chat. When you join as little as a dollar a month, gets you access to that and so many other great things. Instant access to Jeff and I daily. It's it's special. It's it's true. It is. <laughs> Make sure to follow us on Twitter at DET Lions podcast, DET Lions podcast, and at Jeff Risden, the two most pants-free sexy guys forget that last part but guys you're gonna find on twitter all the time also give us a call via skype at detroit lions podcast oh one word detroit lions podcast or call us in the lions line at 929-33 lions it's 929-335-4667 we'll take your calls your messages and we'll put them on the air also come to detroit lions podcast.com subscribe to the podcast so we can we can come into your ear holes automatically <laughs> thank you for tuning in we're gonna see you next time on the detroit lions podcast remember no pants, no toasters, no hot tubs, no problems, baby, because we're your Detroit Lions and Reddit Connection.